Hi everybody, my name's Sandy and I welcome you to the Old Time Patterns YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you another method for resizing commercial sewing patterns called the slash and spread method. Stay tuned! To start out this video, I'm going to assume that you already know how much of an increase you need to do on the pattern you're working on. Um, if you haven't figured that out yet, please watch one of my previous videos on standard measurements and ease, and that will help you to determine how much you need to add or subtract from your pattern. And I'll put a link to that up above. So the pattern that I'm using for this demonstration is Simplicity 8374, and it is kind of a wide neck button down blouse. Um, but this method can be used for any pattern that you're working with. Um, I wanna show you some things on this pattern before we get started. So you can uh, understand why we are cutting in certain places and enlarging or reducing in certain places. So um, we'll start with the left to right measurements. Um, as you can see, this has a wide neck and there is no adding or subtracting in this area right here. Um, with a more fitted garment, where the neckline was thinner, you probably would see some additional lines here for the different sizes. And the next area to look at is the sleeve area. Um, there is definitely some adjustment done here. Um, the difference between the sizes looks to be just a little over a quarter of an inch for each of the sizes. And then the next area to look at is the side seam. There's definitely an increase uh, on the width of the side seam. And that is about half an inch per size. So again, if this was a fitted garment and there were um, grading lines here on the side of the neck, we would definitely do a slash um, right about here, probably as close to center front as you can, maybe about an inch in. And to take care of this increase or decrease on the sleeve, on the arm's eye, we're going to do a slash and spread here in the middle of the shoulder. And to take care of the additional amount that's needed on the side seam, we're going to do a splash, slash and spread um, right about here, about an inch in from the side seam. So for the vertical changes, we do see an increase here between the different sizes, and that's about a quarter of an inch. This tape measure is kind of worn, so you can't really see that very good, but it's about a quarter of an inch between the sizes. Um, so we would definitely do an increase right here to take care of the addition or subtraction that you need in this area from top to bottom. Um, there's also, you can see sizing lines here. Um, this is also about a quarter of an inch. So since we're already doing a slash and spread here to take care of the neckline, we do not need to do another one here to take care of the extra that's in the shoulder. That's all taken care of by this one slash and spread. So we're gonna do that about in the middle of the sleeve all the way across to spread up and down. Um, down at the bottom, we can see that there's not really any adjustments. And this is pretty standard because they, the pattern companies design these patterns to fit somebody who's about five foot six. So um, if you're taller or shorter, then you would need another adjustment. Um, now this here, I wanna make sure you can see this. This 
kind of fools you into thinking that there is a length adjustment here on the bottom, but it's really not. If you were to measure these lines up to the armhole, all of these side seam lines are gonna measure the same. So that's kind of like a optical illusion right there. Um, so again, there's not gonna be any adjustment unless you are taller or shorter. And most of the pattern companies will put this adjustment line um, right at the waistline. So if you needed to adjust for um, your vertical measurements, if you're taller or shorter, um, generally you would do it on that line. Um, this is not a fitted garment. Um, so doing it on the waistline would be just fine. Um, if it was a more fitted garment, I would probably do your addition or subtraction about halfway, halfway between the waist and the armhole. So I would do the adjustment line right here if you were taller or shorter. And I am actually taller. Um, so I'm going to be adding a little bit there. I'm 5'9". And the patterns are usually designed, like I said, for people that are 5'6". So I did actually trace off this pattern. I made a copy of it, um, so that I don't mess up the original pattern because I do eventually want to make this blouse. I think it's cute. Um, so I did trace off a copy and the, the copy is what I'm going to do the slash and spread on. So again, we're going to do increase or decrease line to take care of the neck and the shoulder right here. We're going to do a slash and spread at the waistline to take care of the difference in height. Um, another way to measure this, if you don't just want to go by height, you can um, take your measurements and most of the patterns have a back neck to waist measure on them that you can reference. So this pattern was designed for this back neck to waist measurement. So that is um, that little hump right around the back of your neck down to the back of your waist. So if you wanted to take a measure and compare it to what the pattern is offering for the size that you're, you're working with, um, you can go ahead and do that. And this, this slash right here will be adjusted by that amount that you come up with. Um, if your pattern does not have the back neck, neck to waist measures on it, you can easily go to that pattern maker's website and take a look at their standard measurement chart to find out what those measurements are. Um, you can just Google like simplicity standard measurements or McCall standard measurements and it'll come right up for you. And we are also gonna do, um, we're gonna do a little bit of a neckline change just to show you how to do this. Although um, this garment does not need it um, for the left to right for the width changes. Um, but I am gonna do just a little adjustment just so you can see where I would be doing that at. And we are gonna do an adjustment in the middle of the shoulder to take care of the increase here, which is a quarter of an inch. And we are gonna do an adjustment about an inch in from the side seam to take care of the additional changes that are on the side seam. So it's a quarter of an inch difference here, a half an inch difference here. So we need to do that additional quarter inch and we're gonna do that right here. So um, I'm gonna start drawing the lines on my copy so you can see what's going on. Okay, so my first slash and spread line is going to be for the neckline adjustment and you want to go about one inch in from the side seam. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to use the width of my yardstick here. It's lined up with the side of the pattern. So I'm going to draw a line on the other side of the yardstick for that line. Okay, so I've got that line done. And now I'm going to put a line down through the middle of the shoulder, try and get it as straight as possible. Again, it does not have to be exact. Just try and get it as straight as possible, but you don't want a line that's obviously crooked. I mean, it's not going to go like this. That will not work. Okay. So try and do it up and down as close as you can about right in the middle of the shoulder seam. So I'm going to draw that line. Okay. I think I'm going to switch to a Sharpie because it's kind of hard to see these. Okay, so I've redone those two lines with a Sharpie. I don't recommend that you use a Sharpie 
uh, for your own purposes. I'm just using it so that the lines show up better so you can see them better. Um, the Sharpie just makes way too thick of lines and it gets confusing about um, where you're supposed to cut at. So the next one I'm gonna do is about an inch in from the side seam. This side seam's a little curved. I'm just going with the thinnest part right in the middle. And again, try and line it up top to bottom as evenly as possible. You don't want it to be extremely crooked. Okay, so those are the width adjusting lines that we're gonna be cutting on. So then I'm gonna do the height, or yeah, I'm gonna do the height adjustment now. And again, we want that to be kind of in the center of the sleeve. And again, as straight as possible from side to side. So there's that one. And then I'm gonna do a cut at the waistline. Um, I'm just going, let me see if I can show this to you. I'm going kind of centered in between the bottom of the arm's eye and the bottom of the garment, just kind of in the middle. It does not have to be, like I explained, it does not have to be on this slash and spread line. You can do any place from the waist up to about halfway here. So anywhere in that area is fine to do this on a loose garment. On a fitted garment, again, I would recommend that you did it right at the halfway point right here. That would be my recommendation to do it. So I'm just gonna, gonna go about halfway here, as straight as possible across. Okay, so there's all my lines. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pieces apart now. Okay, so I've got all my pieces cut apart. You can see all the slash and spread lines. It's a lot of pieces, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not as hard as it looks. Um, so now, again, I'm assuming going into this video that you already know how much of an adjustment you need to make, whether it's um, spreading apart for making larger or joining together for making smaller. So you should already have the measurements that you need. So let's assume that we need to increase eight inches. We're going up four sizes. Um, and it, you're gonna start out by dividing that by four because we're only working with one quarter of the pattern. So we're gonna divide that increase by four. So we're gonna do a two inch increase on this piece. Um, so the neckline would need very little of an increase. Out of the two inches, maybe a quarter of an inch. So I didn't ex really explain to you, um, this pattern did not have a neck size adjustment because it's kind of a loose fitting wide neck type of garment. Um, if it was a fitted garment with a tighter neck, there would be an increase here because a size five person and a size 20 person do not have the same size neck. I'm a size 22, 24, something like that. And my neck is a lot bigger than a thinner person. So it, again, if this was a fitted garment, there would definitely be an adjustment line um, right here. So we're going to go ahead and increase that because we're going up so much of a, an increase in size. We're going to increase that about a quarter of an inch. And of course you need to measure. I'm just kind of plopping this in here, but I'll measure in a minute. And um, out of the other two inches, there, remember there was a, a quarter inch increase in the sleeve area in the front of the arm's eye and a half inch increase on the side. Pretty standard for all the pattern companies. So we're gonna do half of the increase here and half of the increase here because they're both the same. That's got a quarter of an inch. You're already taking care of a quarter inch right here and you just need to take care of the other quarter inch. So um, we've taken out a quarter of an inch here. So we've got an inch and three quarters. Of course I had to do <laughs> A weird measurement. So um, an inch and three quarters divided by two. Okay, so an inch and three quarters divided in half would be about seven eighths. So we're going to do a seven eighths increase here. Again, I'm going to measure that out in a minute. 
and then a 7 8 increase here. So we'll put all our pieces kind of together. So a quarter of an inch here, 7 8 here, and 7 8 down here. So the easiest way, because there's just so many pieces, the easiest way is to just take a row at a time. Um, so we're just going to start with the top row and go across, and then we're going to do this row here. And then we're going to do this row here. And then when you're doing the up and down adjustments, you've only got three pieces to worry about. So um, I'm going to go ahead and measure these out and get some paper to tape in the adjustments. Quickly thinking about what I was doing, um, we're going up so much. We're doing a two inch increase from side to side. I'm going to do a half an inch here um, because generally, again, if you had a fitted neckline, there would be an adjustment line there and it's not a lot. It's only going to be about an eighth of an inch. Um, but since we're going up approximately four sizes, I wanted to make sure this spread was accurate. So I'm going to do an eighth of an inch times four sizes to get half an inch right here. So then that'll leave three quarters of an inch on this one and three quarters of an inch on this one. So I'm gonna measure and start putting my paper in. And of course I'm doing a slosh and spread, um, but if you need to reduce the size of your pattern, um, same measurements, an eighth of an inch per size on this one, or whatever you determine is the difference in your neckline that you need to do. And then divide the rest of it equally between this one and this one. And you're going to be crossing them over each other instead of spreading. So you would just cross it over half an inch and tape it there. And this would cross over three quarters of an inch or whatever your measurement is. And you would tape it there. So slash and spread, we have to insert some more paper and put that in there. Okay, so I've got the first set of papers done. Got my little pieces of paper inserted in there. Half inch here, three quarters of an inch here. I'm gonna move on to the second row of pages. So I've got my second row of pieces put together. Same adjustments as the top piece. So now we have two sections that we can put together for the up and down, the vertical adjustment. So this is going to be, you know, I'm assuming that you've taken your measurements and you know what you need. Um, this one here for the sleeve is going to be pretty much a standard quarter inch per size. So um, we're going up approximately four sizes, so we're going to increase this by an inch. And then the rest of the adjustment that you figured out that you needed would be done on this line right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start measuring and taping that off. Okay, so I've got the two rows of pattern pieces taped together here with a one inch increase to take care of the difference in the neckline and the difference in um, the length of the shoulder seam there. So that was one inch. So next we need to determine how much more of an increase or even a decrease we need to do at the waistline. So even if you're shorter, but you're a larger size, you still need to do this increase to make sure that your neckline and your shoulder seam are in the right place in proportion to your body, okay? Because you're going to be, the larger sizes are going to be bigger in the bust area, of course, but you could still be shorter. So depending on your back to neck measurement compared to the back to neck measurement that is on the pattern sizes, you'll need to determine whether you still need to do an increase or do a decrease. So um, the difference in the pattern size, neck to waist measurement that's on the pattern or on the website, if it's not printed on your pattern, between that measurement and your actual measurement. So if you needed to do 
only a three quarter inch increase, you've already done an inch. So you would actually reduce by a quarter of an inch down here. So overlap them by a quarter of an inch to make up the difference that you need to reduce by. If you're taller and you still need more than an inch of increase, then you would add it down here. So either way, you can either decrease if you're on the short side or increase if you're on the tall side. But it's important to take your own measurement. That's the only thing that's going to tell you what you need to do and compare it with the, the measurements on the pattern or on the website. So I am taller. I'm five foot nine. They do these patterns generally for a five foot six person. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add another inch to the waistline on this. But if I was shorter, if I was five foot four, I probably would be subtracting maybe a quarter to a half an inch without taking my measurements. I don't know for sure, but probably about a quarter to a half an inch I would be subtracting at the waistline. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this one seam and then we'll be done with the front of the bodice. So that is it for the front bodice. And now let's take a look at the back of the bodice and see what we need to do there. Okay, so here's the, the back panel for the bodice. And it is exactly the same on the increases as the front. And this is typical. It's typical. It's most likely always going to be that way. So again, we're going to spread. There's an increase here in the neckline. There's an increase here in the shoulder seam, and these are equal. So we're going to slash right in the middle of the arm hole, the arm's eye. We're going to slash right in the middle and do an increase to take care of these measurements getting bigger, taller. And for the width increases or changes, adjustments, um, again, we've got a quarter of an inch between the sizes here and a half an inch between the sizes here. So exactly the same as the front. And again, you can do, I would suggest if you did a neckline change here on your width, on the front, I would do it on the back as well, just to make sure everything matches up properly. And we're gonna do an adjustment here, top to bottom, to take care of this quarter inch increase. And we're gonna do an adjustment here to take care of the additional quarter inch increase that you need on the side seam. So exactly the same as the front. Now your adjustment at the waistline needs to be the same exact adjustment that you did on the front. So whether you reduced or added here at the waistline, you need to do that exact same adjustment on the back piece. So now let's take a look at the sleeve and see what we need to do there. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the sleeve pattern. And one of the first things I want to point out about the sleeve pattern is the difference between the front section and the back section. Um, if you compare these different sections, the front section has a longer straight piece before it starts to rise up to, to the shoulder. So this distance is longer than this distance. And the easiest way to remember that is there's more of your arm on the front half of your body than there is on the back half of your body. So the front section is going to be longer in this area. Um, it's one of those things that if you're not careful, it'll mess you up. Um, what I actually do, and you can see that I did it on my copy, I labeled the front <laughs> and the back because I'm just dingy enough that I can get them mixed up. So that helps me. Um, on this particular sleeve, you can also tell it really easy because it's got the ease marked. And the ease is always going to be, if you have pleats or ease, it's always going to be on the back part of your sleeve. Um, so the next thing I want to point out is... Um, the increase in the height of the sleeve. Now, if we go over to the back piece, there was a quarter of an inch between each of the sizes to make the bodice 
longer from top to bottom. Now over on the sleeve, they've got a shorter increase. This is only about an eighth of an inch in between the sizes, okay? So that's pretty standard, but it also depends on what type of sleeve you're dealing with, okay? So considering that we did an increase right in the middle of the sleeve, here's the back piece and the, the line where we did the cut and slash, okay? We, we put in an extra inch on this line to, to make it longer from top to bottom. So I would actually add an inch in here to keep the measurements the same, okay? The reason I would do that rather than changing it from a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch and just continuing on with that eight, eighth of an inch for four more sizes it's easier to subtract fabric than it is to add it later. So I would go ahead and add the inch to keep the same with what we did on the back and the front and try it on your garment. And if it looks like it's not fitting right, then you can fold it back, cut a little bit out, reduce it down by half, and then recut your fabric. And you're not gonna have to cut a new piece of fabric because you're reducing the size rather than adding to it. So always start bigger. And um, your increase, like here we did it right in the middle of the sleeve from top to bottom, we picked a center point. You would also do it in the middle of the sleeve here. So halfway between this point and this point is where you would do your increase to make the sleeve taller, okay? So, for the side seam, well, the side seam of the sleeve, um, if we look at the back, they did half an inch for the sizes. And here, you see a quarter of an inch between the sizes, but there's also a quarter of an inch over here. So, it's the same half inch increase. So, the same increase that you did on this line, you would do... On, on the sleeve. Now, the, the place that you're gonna do that, um, here it's got marked the different sizes, and this is to match up with this, the shoulder seam where your front and back pieces go together. So you're not gonna split right in the middle. You do wanna split off to the front side. Again, this is the front, this is the back. You wanna split off to the front side and generally, you don't have to be exact, but generally about two inches from center, you would do your split right there, up and down, to do the increase on the side, side seam of the sleeve to match this increase that you did here. So same distance. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my copy of my sleeve here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in the lines to match what I did on the front and back pieces. Okay, so I've got my lines drawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these apart and tape in my adjustments so you can see what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, I've done my slash and spreads. Everything's taped back together so you can see what the finished product looks like. But you're probably wondering why I only did three quarters of an inch here to match the three quarters of an inch here because we also did a three quarter inch adjustment on the front piece. This is the back piece. We also did a three quarter inch adjustment on the front piece. So you're probably thinking that there should be an inch and a half right here. You can do that. Of course, if you feel like your arms are bigger than average for your size, you might definitely want to do that. And you can make adjustments later, just like I said before, if this ends up being too much and your sleeve isn't laying right, um, you can readjust this pattern, recut your fabric, and you don't have to cut a whole new sleeve because you're reducing the size of the, um, the cuts rather than increasing. You can do the same thing here, add the inch and a half in between here and make it full size. The reason I didn't do that is because there's ease in this pattern um, to, to fit this into the sleeve line. So on the larger sizes, you'll have less ease, 
but that actually balances out the look of the garment. So um, I know for me, if I had a sleeve with a lot of ease, it probably would make me look even bigger, which is really not what you're looking for. So having a sleeve that has a little bit less ease, which it would because it's got to make up for not having the inch and a half right here, that probably would look better on me. So that's the reason I did that. But again, if you think you need the full inch and a half right here, definitely do that. And you can always make adjustments to it later because you would be reducing and not um, needing to cut a whole new piece out. So that's the reason that I did that. Um, so that's about it. So that's it for the slash and spread method for resizing patterns. If you have any questions or comments, please definitely let me know. I'm always willing, ready and willing to help anybody with their projects as much as I possibly can. Um, if you want a more personal conversation and you prefer to email me rather than uh, having it publicly go, go in the comments, you can do that too. My email is on the about page on the YouTube channel. Um, so feel free to do that as well. Um, hopefully this video has been really helpful to you. It is my desire to help. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, and we'll see you next time. Take care.